Hi, I'm John Delano, Money and Politics Editor, KDK Television, CBS Pittsburgh. And our very, very special guest today is Mike Doyle, who is a Plum Borough Council member and the Republican candidate for U.S. House of Representatives in the 12th Congressional District. Mr. Doyle, good to be with you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Delano. Glad to be here. So I think first we should ask, a lot of folks may not know much about you, who is Mike Doyle, a council member from Plum Borough? Well, um, I, uh, thanks for the question. It's great to be here with you, uh, John. Um, I have uh, been on Plum Council now for 17 years. I've been president for 13 of those years. Um, I'm very proud of the record there. We've got a great team uh, and uh, we've done a lot of good things over the years. Uh, in the real world, I'm uh, uh, in the insurance business. I've been with the same company for 32 years. We insure governments in the state of Pennsylvania uh, for property and casualty insurance. Um, uh, been a good job. I'm right downtown Pittsburgh. I've been down there for uh, for a lot of years in the Gulf Tower. Um, uh, married, uh, two kids, two stepchildren, and uh, they're great kids all grown up. As a matter of fact, my son is a junior at Penn State, and he's in the blue band. So he's living his best life right now. So, uh, but yeah, that, uh, in a nutshell, that's, uh, that's me, the, the other Mike Doyle, as they say. So why do you want to be a member of Congress? Well, John, um, I, I've been a political animal for a long time. I've been active in uh, Allegheny County politics for probably 25 years now. Um, so this isn't just a, a whim uh, because my name happens to be Mike Doyle. Um, a lot of people have fun with that. But no, I, I look and see what's going on in D.C. And uh, quite frankly, it, it's it's it frightens me and it's not good. Um, uh, I think I can bring a lot to the table. Uh, I have a history in Plum for working with both Republicans and Democrats to get things done. I'll tell you this. Ninety nine percent of our votes in Plum are unanimous. I'm proud of that. Uh, we work really well together. I have the ability to reach across the aisle. And quite frankly, we need more than that or, or more of that in D.C. Um, it's become too hostile to to, uh, you know, it's 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 sport now to vilify the opponent. Um, and I think that that's just counterproductive to uh, the people that you represent. Uh, and I really believe that I can bring a, a, a really good um, uh, common sense approach to Washington. I want to ask you about some of that in a minute, but let's first uh, go back to your name, because a lot <laughs> of folks are confused or may well be confused when they see your name on the ballot. You're, are you any relation to Congressman Mike Doyle? No relation at all. It's a, just a very common Irish name. It is a fairly common name. Do you think people need to know what makes you different than the congressman? Well, my name is a double-edged sword, John. Um, I need to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm a Republican and I'm running on the Republican, uh, uh, you know, I ran on the Republican ballot. I need to make sure the Republicans know I'm not that Mike Doyle. Uh, nothing personal against Mike. I've known him. Um, but uh, uh, our policies and our politics are different. So I need to make sure the Republicans know uh, this isn't just me out there trying to fool the Democrats. That, that's not my intent here. As a matter of fact, I've been asked for years, John, to run against Mike Doyle. And I've always said no. Um, I take what I do seriously. And uh, it would have been a circus, <laughs> quite frankly. And, I mean, it would have been fun and funny and people would, like you would have had a ball with it. But and I'm sorry I didn't run, John. But uh, uh, but no, that's uh, um it is a double-edged sword, uh, and I'm, I'm not out here trying to fool anybody. The fact is, though, on your lawn signs, for example, you don't have the word Republican on there. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I don't. Uh, like when I ran for the state house back in 10 and 12, I didn't have Republican on it either. Um, I, I don't have it on, uh, you know, I, I had an interview yesterday with a, a reporter at the Trib, um, and, uh, and I said that uh, um, I, I, I honestly didn't think that was a big deal. I'm really not trying to fool anybody. Uh, I mean, I just all you have to do is go on my website, look at my positions, and you'll know I'm not a Democrat. Well, obviously, you're not running against Congressman Mike Doyle, but you are running against State Representative Summer Lee. So let me ask you to articulate, what do you see as some of the big differences between Republican Mike Doyle and Democrats Summer Lee? Well, I don't think you'll see a bigger contrast between two candidates anywhere in the country, quite frankly. Um, First of all, uh, I, I mean, uh, I've seen video of her. I've seen a commercial of her, actually, where she's saying she wants to defund the police. She considers herself a prison abolitionist. Um, those are those are two issues. Uh, I support the police. Uh, I, I, the fact that she wants to eliminate jails and prisons, 
is just mind boggling to me. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, and that's probably why I'm, and I'm very proud of this, John. Not only did the three FOP lodges in the district endorse me, but I got the endorsement of the statewide uh, state police. The, the, uh, so I'm, and I'm honored and very proud of that. Uh, so that's one major huge, huge issue. Another another very big contrasting issue here is uh, 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 this, uh, the way we would fight inflation. Um, she I'm, I, she doesn't she doesn't really support uh, Joe Biden because he doesn't think he's spending enough money. This the, the spending that's going on in Washington D.C. is killing this country and it's it's pushing up inflation, and it and we all feel it in uh, the grocery stores and the gas stations, and we need to get the spending under control. Uh, and and just start running this country with uh, yeah with common sense policies. We also the other big thing is too is I'm going to be known as the energy congressman. I think we need to get we we need to re, uh, lessen the, the restrictions. And uh, we we are sitting here in Pennsylvania on enough natural gas that will make this country energy independent again, like we were two and a half years ago. And we need to unleash that power. We have the cleanest energy in the world here. The last time I checked. The Saudi Arabia's, the China's, and the the Argentina's of the world don't have an EPA. They're the ones that, are, and the hypocrisy here is, they don't want to hurt the, our soils here, but they don't care about the soil over there. It's one more, it's one big earth here, and they're killing it. We have the cleanest energy, and we need to harness it and help this country get back into uh, energy independence. Because for me, John, energy independence is national security. Those are the, those are the big those are the three biggest issues. Let me ask you about an issue did, that you did not raise, but which your opponent does raise, and that's the whole right of a woman to choose what to do with her body, especially abortion rights. Where do you stand on abortion rights? Would you support a federal bill to outlaw abortion nationwide? Well, I'm pro-life, John, um, and I do support the exceptions. Um, and with that said, uh, I, I was I was very happy to see that the um, the, the issue was given back to the states. Um, I, I believe in states' rights. Uh, it gives more power to the people, and I I would think that people like Summerlee would be excited about that because uh, it, it's closer to home. And she's in the state legislature. She she has a lot to do. She's on the front line of that issue if she really wants to push it to, to her to her, uh, her 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 viewpoint. Uh, of, of pro-life, uh, or I'm sorry, pro-choice issues. But I am uh, pro-life, and uh, I I do support the exceptions. And um, you know, uh, I'm glad it's I'm glad that it went back to the states. The exceptions being rape, incest, and to save the life of the mother. Correct. Uh, but what about federal legislation? As you know, Senator Lindsey Graham has proposed federal legislation that could come before you if you're a member of Congress that essentially would outlaw all abortions, regardless of what states chose to do. Would you support a federal bill like that? I, 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 I would be urging the leadership uh, of my party uh, not to do something like that. I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer and a big supporter of, 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 of giving it, leaving it to the states. Um, I, would, I would try my best to, to have that not come to a vote. As you know, and as your opponent would say, you can talk about your desire for bipartisanship and point to what you've done at Plum, Plum Borough mm -hmm. all you want. But Congress is a, and the House is a pretty partisan body. You would be uh, supporting, I presume, election deniers, people who don't believe that Joe Biden was legitimately elected president, to leadership roles in the Republican Party in the U.S. House. At least that's one of the arguments the Democrats make. Uh, and that party control does matter. How can you assure Democrats in this 12th congressional district that you would not simply follow the Republican Party leadership in Washington if you're elected? Well, because, John, I think for myself, um, and I'm, I'm going there to represent the people in this district, uh, and I, I uh, as far as the election deniers go, um, I mean, I, I'm not one of them. I mean, Joe Biden is the president and it's very easily, you can tell, just look at the economy. <laughs> um, uh, the, the policies that are coming out of DC, uh, ha I mean, need to be addressed. And uh, yeah, I mean, that question, every single freshman congressman that comes in is starting from square one. Summer Lee will be starting square one too, should she win this race? And uh, I, 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 I'm here to tell you that uh, the people I'm talking to in this district Democrats and Republicans is 
we don't want another member of the squad representing us here in the 21st district in this, in this, in this, uh, in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh. Um, so uh, listen, we'll, we'll, we're all starting square one fresh when we get there. Um, but I'll be running, uh, having been uh, uh, president of council and dealing with budgets and, and police issues and public works issues and, and all of that. Uh, I, I'll be ahead of the curve and I can't wait to hit the ground running when I get there. Do you, do you believe that Summer Lee will be part of the squad if she's elected to Congress? There's no doubt about it. Um, she, she was in Detroit a couple of weeks ago with Khalib talking about Pakistan. She's not even here in, in the district campaigning. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I, I believe she will be. And I believe she, I, I can't sit here and tell you that I saw a video of her saying it, but uh, I mean, with AOC supporting her, the Progressive Caucus supporting her, I believe, I, I believe that is her dream to be a member of the squad. And I jokingly tell people, uh, John, that uh, if, if that happens, Summer Lee will make AOC look like Ronald Reagan. You think she's more progressive than AOC? I do. Do you think that she's a socialist? I do. Well, she says she is. She, she's a self-admitted socialist. I'm not sure that, well, I guess it all comes down to your definition of what exactly a socialist is. So maybe mm -hmm. that's a better way to ask. What is it wor that worries you? If she's elected to the U.S. House, you obviously have some concerns about what that means. What does that mean to you? What it means to me is, is that she will be supporting bills and, 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 and writing bills to defund our police, to make our streets less safe. She wants the, the Green New Deal, which is a disaster for, for the economy here in, in this country. She uh, will not support securing our border. Did you know, John, that Pennsylvania now ranks number three in the country in fentanyl deaths? This is, we are a border state now. We need to get, I heard somebody say this line uh, uh, a week or so ago, and I wish I could take credit for it. And I wish I could give credit to who said it. I forget who said it. But he said, I support tall fences and wide gates. Come into our country. I support immigration. Just do it legally. And if some of those laws need to be looked at because it takes too long for, for them to come in legally, then let's look at them. Let's be correct, progressive with that. But if we don't get our border under control, we don't have a country. Uh, Councilman Doyle, let me just ask you finally about the politics of this district, because as you know, this is a district that's majority Democrat with a capital D. Mm -hmm. I believe it voted for President Biden by some 20 points. Um, but it's not as Democratic as the old district that was represented by Congressman Doyle. So how do you win in this district as a Republican? Are you feeling Democratic support of any kind? What can you point to that would suggest you've got a shot in this 12th congressional district? Well, that's a good question. I'm happy to answer it. Uh, and to your point, it went from a D plus 18 down to a D plus eight. OK, and I'm going to make the point that I think it's more of a D plus three or four. And here's why. Um, and this is where I believe that the Supreme Court made a strategic error in, 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 when they when they drew this district up. The registration in this district is 60 percent, 40 percent, roughly D to R. In Plum Borough, the registration is almost two to one against me, D to R, yet we sweep every election. So they're registered Democrats, but they vote Republican. I had the same experience in Monroeville when I ran for the state house back in 10 and 12. So it's not 60, 40. I could argue it might be more like 42, 40, 52, 48. So it's, it's a very winnable seat. It's in play. And that's why the NRCC is behind us in supporting. The National Republicans are supporting this campaign. We're on the radar. Now, secondly, uh, we're all familiar with the Mon Valley. Uh, it helped build this country, the Mon Valley and the steel mills. Um, I had mayors, councilmen, elected, uh, elected officials, firemen, Democrats, had an event for me at Westwood Golf Club uh, a month or so ago. There was roughly 85 to 90 people in the room, all Democrats, most of them elected. And they all said, Mike, listen, we're Democrats. We're not socialists. There's no way we can pull a lever for Summer Lee. And, and we talked and, uh, you know, they, they see that I'm a, I'm a moderate. And uh, I had about 150 yard signs in the room with me. They say Democrats for Doyle. They're all gone. And they asked for more. So I, I believe that, yes, uh, I, I need a, a certain percentage of Democrat votes to win this seat, uh, but I believe I'm going to get them uh, because and simply because of uh, the radical views of my opponent. 
bottom line is you believe that this is a winnable election for you. Absolutely. Especially, John, when you consider that 20 percent of Westmoreland County is now into the seat uh, in this seat. Uh, I'm going to be strong in Plum. I'm going to be strong in Monroeville. I'm going to do very well in the Mon. And then you go to the other side of the city, uh, to Bethel Park and Upper St. Clair, um, Pleasant Hills. Uh, we're gonna and and guess what? There is, believe it or not, <laughs> contrary to popular belief, there is a Republican committee in the city of Pittsburgh, <laughs> and uh, their numbers are growing. And uh, we've been focused in down there too. And uh, we're we're not, I'm not leaving any stone unturned. Uh, this is this is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity, and uh, our country's at stake. And I'm 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 working really hard. Well, Plum Borough Council member Mike Doyle, not related to the Congressman Mike <laughs> Doyle. Thank you, sir, very much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate it. It was good to talk to you. Thank you, John. It was great to talk to you, too. Thanks so much.